All right, guys, we are gonna be smashing shoulders today. Shoulders used to be a weakness of mine. Hopefully it's not a weakness now. Um, and then it, then it turned into a strength and then it turned into a weakness again. The reason being is because I've had some shoulder injuries in the past, uh, mountain biking, I separated both my AC joints. Then uh, about a year and a half ago, I tore my uh, infraspinate, uh, my subscapularis and my supraspinatus. And they're still torn now, and hopefully I'll be having surgery. But I've been able to work around it, being a little bit smarter with my training, making sure that I've built up the strength around it more throughout my rotator cuff, and doing a lot of intensity and volume. So, part of that volume today is going to be side raises with drop sets, front raises with drop sets, there's going to be a few drop sets in here. Now, this is the perfect workout for the beginner because we've got very simple movements today, nothing advanced. However, if you really push yourself with the intensity, it's great for the advanced trainer as well. But I like to you know, stick to the meat and potatoes, the basic exercises. So if you're a beginner wanting to really bring up those delts so you have nice caps and have a good V taper inserting towards the top of those lateral head, uh, front head, rear head of those delts, this is the perfect workout for you. So we're gonna start off with side raises seated. I just done a couple of warm ups, so I'm gonna go straight into the 30s, then drop down with no rest, straight into 25s, drop down again, and 15s. So I did about uh, 17, 18 repetitions with the first exercise, the first set I'd say. Uh, so it was a little bit light, but it's good because I don't want to put too much stress on my rotator cuff and my torn tendons here, um, torn, mu torn muscle, sorry. And then I was doing about eight repetitions each on those drops. So anywhere about like 26 and 30 repetitions in total. Hit the spot. I could really feel the isolation of that exercise. The whole time that I'm doing this, I'm not thinking about raising up, I'm thinking about raising out to the side. Because that is the action of the delt to pull up and then release. Pull up and then release. It doesn't pull it up, it pulls the arm up out to the side. Don't raise it, because generally, if you raise up, you'll start incorporating your traps. That's it, side raise is done. So we drop down, we did a 30s, then we drop down to 20s, 22s, then I drop down again once more to the 17s. Now we're gonna do front raises. I'm gonna do that on the bench again. However, I'm gonna do it at a slight incline. Doing it at a slight incline, sitting down, really does isolate the area. So much so that you can only use a very light weight because you don't use any body momentum. You don't use any of your lower back. You're using just your front delt. So I'm only gonna drop down once. This isn't gonna be a, a triple drop set. This is just be a single, single drop set because uh, you'll be uh, working at a relatively light weight to begin with and working with a lot of volume. So I generally would only drop down once doing the front raises here. So uh, let's get into that. So I'll set this up at slightly steeper than say, maybe about 45, 45, 50 degrees. And uh, that'll be perfect for this exercise. And just like the side raises, I'll be doing both arms at the same time. I've said this before, I don't know why so many people always go unilateral, one side at a time. You know, uh, I have no idea why. So that's why we're gonna do both at the same time just to get it done, hit both of these delts with a lot of time under ah. tension without having one delt completely rest and disengage oh. while you work the opposite side. Damn. Wow, you can really feel the pump on that. When you're doing this seated, because it is so isolated, providing that you're hydrated and you took your pre-cage like 40 minutes before the workout and of course drinking your in-cage during it, wherever it is, where did I put it? Yeah. Then you're gonna feel a crazy pump uh, during this exercise, which is exactly what you need, I feel, when you're hitting delts. It is hard for a lot of people to get that mind-muscle connection, to get the blood flow, the vacillation, 
but that is essential, obviously, if you want to have that neuromuscular pathway encourage these muscles to grow in your delts. Up to there. Hit my hand, hold it there for a second. Hold, 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 down. Hold, 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 down. Palms facing towards your side, then down. That's it, perfect. Hold it there, hold. That's it, good. Hold, that's it, right there. Good, squeeze, come on. Okay, drop it. That's it, good. Now use a bit of body, you know, swing it a little bit now, swing it. Just get a few more reps out. Come on, swing it. Two more. Easy. Oh, language, you have to bleep that. Bleep that out, naughty. My mum will be watching this. So this shoulder press, this is a hammer press. I'm doing it facing the machine. I find it a little bit more difficult by doing it that way because it really puts your elbow in line with your outer delt. So I don't get too much assistance from the anterior delt. So by doing so, I have to go lighter on it, and I, which is perfect. So I don't want to go too heavy on this exercise because of my rotator cuff. But I find that it isolates the area very, very well. Now Sunshine is doing it the conventional way. Her back is a little bit uh, delicate at the moment. So it will put your, uh, your upper and lower back under a little bit of pressure. So unless you feel that you've got a real good, strong, stable core and back, I'd suggest that you do it the conventional way. Oh, come on, motherfucker. Get your fucking noggin into it then. So started off with a behind the neck press on this. This is the only comfortable variation of this exercise that I can do. If you do have any shoulder issues that prevents you from doing it behind, behind the neck, definitely go behind, uh, in front of the head when you're doing a shoulder press on the Smith & Wesson here. And I suggest that you possibly have maybe a support on your back if you have any back issues. And then what I did was superset it. As soon as I couldn't do any more, I faced towards one side Pull of the machine off, please, babe. and knocked it out with a single arm with about half the amount of weight. Just uh, punch out a bit of a drop set there. Then after a rest, repeated that again and this time turned the opposite way to work the other side uh, the other delt and that is it so just done uh, two sets of the military press and uh, one set each of that uh. single arm press uh. now we're gonna hit some rear delts to finish off these bad boys rear delts is uh, something that is sometimes a weakness on people so you definitely shouldn't neglect it. So we're gonna finish off strong. Make sure that you've completely finished your in cage now. So you have that new muscular response. You have that organic caffeine that will keep you focused and intense. And you have the blood flow from the citrulline to ensure that you get a good pump into your rear delts. And your carnosine is completely settled in. That extra 1.6 grams will help pretty much knock out that intense buildup of that lactic acid that we usually deal with. We want to make it a little bit more manageable now just to get out the last few reps. So let's hit some rear delts. Oh man. That's it. 
So you'll notice I was standing up when I was doing this exercise. Instead of sitting down, I find if, I'm ang if I angle myself towards the machine, where my face is almost touching the bar there, I find that I'm just able to hit my rear delts a little bit better, it's not so restricted. If I'm sat down and more upright, I just feel it more in my back and my rhomboids and my traps. So try that if you find it a little bit hard to get that mind-muscle connection on your rear delts. And it goes to show that sometimes, for some people, if you go too slow, you do bring in other assisting muscles. I was going very slow on the first set and, you know, pausing, holding, contraction. And when I was doing so, I felt that I was targeting my triceps as well. So I went much, much faster on this last set and I just felt it all throughout the uh, rear delt. So find that uh, tempo, that momentum and that range of motion that works for you. Well, that's a wrap, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for joining us, Sunshine. Thank you. Had a good delt workout. What was that, like 50, 45, 50 minutes? Very fast, hard, intense, quality over quantity. And uh, I feel like, you know, we really tapped into anterior, lateral, rear delt, everything. But what you're gonna have to do just to make sure that you are able to manifest some muscle onto your delt is work the angles, the rep range, the amount of repetitions, the amount of intensity that you throw into it, and uh, the speed of that, you know, the tempo of your repetitions to work specifically for you. I suggest like three or four working sets per exercise. Rest is only long enough for your training partner to go or for or about a minute. Just keep the blood pushing into uh, that area. And you don't always have to go really heavy within the six to eight repetition range. If you do go very heavy, I suggest that you go very slow on the negative to ensure that you don't put too much tension placed upon your tendons and your ligaments. You can push out of the concentric part, but very slow on the negative to make the exercise hard on your delts, but not on your rotator cuff, because we're here for longevity and quality of these workouts throughout the rest of our lives. Anyway, that is the days of our lives for today. Delts are done. If you like this video, if you want more of these workouts, please like, comment, and subscribe.